Member for Sandringham. Thank you, Acting Speaker. I also rise to uh, speak on the Workplace Injury Rehabilitation Compensation Amendment Work Cover Scheme Modernisation Bill 2023. Acting Speaker, work cover is broken. Work cover is broken. Work cover is broken because Labor broke it. Uh, when we were last in government between uh, 2010 and 14, uh, under the ad administration of a coalition government uh, in this state, uh, work the work cover scheme was a viable scheme. The work cover scheme uh, was returning a profit did not need to be topped up, did not need to go cap in hand to the uh, treasurer of the day uh, and seek uh, for them to dip into consolidated revenue to prop up a failing scheme, a broken scheme. No, no. In fact, uh, on two occasions that I'm aware of during the last coalition government, uh, in fact, the government of the day was actually able to go to work cover and seek a return from work cover, which then was injected back into consolidated revenue to assist the government of the day to build schools and hospitals, to pay for nurses, to teachers, uh, fireys, ambos, and to provide the services that every Victorian relies upon. Uh, in fact, during the last coalition government, uh, Acting Speaker, uh, work cover premiums weren't just cut once, but twice. Uh, a better deal for uh, Victorian employers, a better deal for Victorian employees, uh, a better deal for all Victorians. Nine years on, uh, after nine years under Labor, uh, the work cover scheme in this state uh, again is broken and the blame for that circumstance must be squarely laid at the feet uh, of the current administration. Uh, they have proposed, through the introduction of this bill, uh, the panacea uh, to the current troubles of work cover. Uh, they say in a, or they claim, in a bill uh, ranging uh, just 36 pages, Acting Speaker, uh, that this will fix the broken work cover system. What they don't say, however, Acting Speaker, is the following. They do not guarantee, having raised work cover premiums this year already, they say at a Average of 42 per cent, can I tell you, Acting Speaker, I am yet to meet a business uh, that has had their work cover premium increase just by 42 per cent. More often than not, the uh, many, many uh, uh, businesses around Victoria, and I have been contacted by businesses not just within my own constituency, uh, but around the state, uh, their work cover premiums have increased by more like 60 per cent, 70 per cent, 80 per cent, 90 per cent, 100 per cent. And so, to say, for the government to say that they've increased by an average of 42 per cent is frankly a furphy. Uh, so there are two reasons uh, why uh, we will oppose this bill uh, in its current form. Firstly, because there is no guarantee that Victorian businesses who are already under pressure because of a skill shortage, because of uh, increasing costs of uh, amenities, 25 per cent, 26 per cent, I'm sorry, in, uh, uh, a, a, in the commercial world, a, a power increase uh, in, the last, uh, in the last 12 months, 25 per cent of the domestic market, 26 per cent in business. Um, the cost of employing people, uh, the cost of supplies, um, all of these existing cost pressures, and add on top of that uh, the 53 newer increased taxes, many of which are in uh, affect businesses directly, and add on top of that an increased uh, premium for work cover. So there is no guarantee in this bill that work cover premiums won't continue to rise. Let me share with the, uh, for the House uh, uh, for the House's information and for, for yours as well, Acting Speaker. Uh, true words have never been spoken. True words have never been spoken. No, boss. No job. No boss, no job. Now, I know, I know, Acting Speaker, that those opposite uh, members of the Allen Labor government uh, will seek to uh, categorise uh, employers in this state uh, as the big baddies, as the people who are out, uh, who don't act in the interests of the people that they employ, uh, but that is not true. Uh, employers in this state, and let's be frank, uh, they need to take care of their employees. They need uh, to take care of their customers because if they don't, they don't have a, uh, they don't have a business. Uh, they don't have an opportunity to, uh, to, to earn a wage, to reinvest in their business, to employ more people, to give people the opportunity 
that we in this place should want those people, our fellow Victorians, to have. The second reason why we oppose this bill in its current form, Acting Speaker, is because of the government's um, uh, claim that there is going to be a focus on return to work. Now, at a principles level, we agree. We think there should be a focus on return to work. Uh, but in an extraordinary move, Acting Speaker, and I've been to a, a number of um, bill briefings offered by the government in, in my coming up to five years uh, in this place, never once before has a government bill briefing been offered by the minister themselves. So I am grateful uh, for the uh, minister, uh, Minister Pearson, for, uh, for his particular interest in this bill. Uh, and his particular vested interest in the success of this bill. Uh, but during the course of that briefing, we asked the minister any number of times for him to define, uh, to give us a few, some further details on what return to work Victoria would look like. Acting Speaker, if you weren't there, you should have been. It was almost like the minister, uh, through the course of the briefing, was having sort of further expanded ideas about what it could be. Acting Speaker, this is completely unacceptable. You do not bring a bill to this place and say that a key feature of this is a focus on return to work and not have an idea, a defined, clarified, um, uh, you know, finalised idea about what return to work Victoria looks like. Is it going to sit independent of work cover? Is it going to sit within work cover? Is it going to sit within the department? Is it not? Is it going to be its own statutory agency? Uh, sitting aside work cover. Um, and the other thing is, Acting Speaker, as it currently stands, there's been no dollars allocated to return work Victoria. So how are they going to pay for it? So on that basis, uh, as I've said, the bill in its current form, because there is no guarantee that uh, premiums won't rise and there is no detail uh, on the government's focus on return to work Victoria, uh, that is why we oppose the bill in its current form. I would like to uh, draw the House's attention to comments uh, by the Victorian head of the Australian Industry Group, Tim Piper, who said, the premiums are increasing at a time when virtually every other cost is increasing and causing, pardon me, Victorian businesses considerable headaches. Victorian businesses need a work safe system that supports them, supports employees. But in recent times, the cost of business have blown out, mainly as the result of increased mental health injury claims within the public service. Another very interesting point which I will come back to should I have the time to do so. The Victorian Chamber of Commerce and Industry Chief Executive Paul Guerra said, uh, and this is earlier in the year, today's 42% increase has contributed to Victoria's having the highest work cover rates in the country uh, and will impact our reputation as the best place to do business. Acting Speaker, as the state's shadow treasurer, as the state's alternative treasurer, um, being part of the state's alternative government, uh, that, that fully intends, uh, with everything we have, to become the government following the no November 2026 election uh, in just three short years' time, I don't want businesses to leave this state. We don't need more businesses to leave this state. We need, given our debt position, uh, given the daily interest repayments uh, that we are paying because of the debt position uh, that this government has got us into over the last nine years, we need greater economic activity in this state. We need more businesses to make this state their home. We need existing businesses to expand within this state. We need existing businesses to employ more people. We need government to get out of the way of businesses to enable them to do what they do best, to help Victorians, to give Victorians the opportunity that they need at their time so in turn those Victorians can pay their bills, pay their school fees, pay their mortgages, pay their increased power prices, pay their increased grocery bills and live a fulsome, a wholesome and a fruitful life that every member of this chamber should want for our fellow Victorians. I support, Acting Speaker, uh, the reason amendment moved by my colleague, the Shadow Minister, the member for Eildon, who I might say has done a power of work in this space. She is a leader in her own right and on behalf of the Coalition she has engaged uh, fully and wholesomely with the government on this matter uh, and uh, I trust she will continue to do so in the future. Um, I fully support the member for Eildon, uh, Eildon's um, uh, reasoned amendment, Acting Speaker. Uh, and again, I say 
Um, we do not want the work cover scheme to fall over. We do want, not want premiums to rise. We do need more detail about to return to work Victoria because Victorians deserve nothing less.